uncovering the tomb of the royal scribe in Abu Sir. During its work in the Abu Sir archaeological area, the Czech archaeological mission affiliated with the Faculty of Arts, Charles University in Prague, uncovered the tomb of the royal writer Jehuti Imhat, which dates back to the middle of the first millennium BC. This part of the Abusa Cemetery includes tombs for senior officials and military leaders from the 26th and 27th dynasties, and is of great importance to students of ancient Egyptian society during this era. This was stated by Dr. Mustafa Waziri, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, pointing out that the importance of uncovering this tomb is due to the fact that the personality of this royal writer, Jahuti Imhat, who lived during the 27th dynasty of ancient Egyptian history, was not known before, adding this new discovery, in addition to previous discoveries, at the site of Abusia, including the tomb of the military leader Wah Ibera, which was uncovered the year before last by the Czech mission, will shed more light on the historical changes that occurred in Egypt during the turbulent times of the 6th century and the 5th BC. The director of the Czech mission explained that the cemetery was built in the form of a well ending in a burial chamber and that although the upper part of the cemetery was not found intact, the burial chamber contains many scenes and rich hieroglyphic writings, indicating that the burial chamber can be reached via a small horizontal passage down the well about three meters long. Surprisingly, the well leading to the cemetery contained many remains of scenes that were part of the scenery of the neighboring cemetery, which was built for one of the military leaders during that period, who was called Menk Ibn Kao. He added that the burial chamber of Jutiem Hat is rich in texts and scenes, as on the northern wall entrance. There is a long series of religious texts against snake bites quoted from the texts of the pyramids. The southern and western walls were also engraved with scenes of ritual offerings and a large list of offerings, while the ceiling of the burial chamber was engraved with a view of the sun's journey across the sky in its morning and evening boats, accompanied by hymns to the rising and setting of the sun. During its work inside the burial chamber, the mission found the coffin of the deceased, which was made of stone and decorated with hieroglyphic texts and depictions of the gods from the outside and inside. As for the upper side of the coffin lid and its longer sides, they were decorated with various texts from the Book of the Dead, including images of the gods who protect the deceased. The shorter sides of the cover bear images of the goddesses Isis and Nephthys, accompanied by texts of protection for the deceased. The outer sides of the coffin are decorated with excerpts from the texts of the coffins and pyramids, a partial repetition of the spells that actually appeared on the walls of the burial chamber. At the bottom of the inner wall of the coffin, the goddess Imentet, the goddess of the West, was depicted. The inner sides contain what are called canopic incantations, recited by this goddess and the god of the earth, Jeb. All of these religious and magical texts mentioned were intended to ensure the smooth entry of the deceased into eternal life. The director of the mission also noted that no funerary objects were found inside the cemetery of Jehuti Imhat, as the cemetery was robbed perhaps early in the 5th century AD. Anthropological studies of the skeletal remains of the owner of the tomb showed that Jahuti Imhat died at a relatively young age, as he likely died at the age of 25, and his mummy had signs indicating that he was suffering from some diseases due to his job, such as erosion in the column. He suffered from severe osteoporosis due to working sitting for long periods of time, and this injury may confirm that Jahuti Imhat was related to the owners of the neighboring cemeteries, who were also confirmed to be infected with the same disease, including, for example, the priest, the famous Ayof Ah. The 26th dynasty, also known as the 
Sait dynasty, after its seat of power, the city of Sais, reigned from 672 to 525 BC and consisted of six pharaohs. It started with the unification of Egypt under Shamtik, 1C 656 BC, itself a direct consequence of the sack of Thebes by the Assyrians in 663 BC. Canal construction from the Nile to the Red Sea began. Egypt seems to have expanded into the Near East early in this period. A wide range of archaeological finds from the Levant shows an Egyptian occupation and control in the late decades of the 7th century BC. These include various Egyptian objects from several sites, ostraca, and documents showing a tribute tax system and evidence from the fortress of Mezad Hashavyahu. Egyptian influence reached to the Euphrates area in places such as Kimuhu and Kuramati. Later, they were pushed back by the defeat at Qasimish, although Egyptian intervention in the Near East seems to have continued after this battle. Amasis II followed a new policy and directed his interests toward the Greek world. He annexed Cyprus during his reign. To the south, Samtik II led a great military expedition that reached deep into Upper Nubia and inflicted a heavy defeat on them. A Demotic papyrus from the reign of Amos II describes a small expedition into Nubia, the character of which is unclear. There is archaeological evidence of an Egyptian garrison at Dorginati in Lower Nubia during the Sait period. One major contribution from the late period of ancient Egypt was the Brooklyn papyrus. This was a medical papyrus with a collection of medical and magical remedies for victims of snake bites based on snake type or symptoms. Artwork during this time was representative of animal cults and animal mummies. This image shows the god Pataikos wearing a scarab beetle on his head, supporting two human-headed birds on his shoulders, holding a snake in each hand, and standing atop crocodiles.